Hello there everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into D&D &D Horror Stories, also known as Dungeons & Dragons Horror Stories, where we read horror stories from people who play Dungeons & Dragons, whether they be creeps or someone's just a dumbass. Ah, uh, let's get started with today's stories. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Player initiates PvP in Session 1 against new player. Long time lurker, first time poster. This happened several years ago in my first game as a player. I had DM'd a couple of times before, but this was my first time playing with the new group that I had met at the local gaming club. Most players at the table were fine, and the DM was, and is, a good friend of mine. But there was one player who ruined my first playing experience. The red flags were there in Session Zero. I was playing a fighter slash Pact of the Blade Warlock, the story being he was a soldier who had picked up a possessed weapon and entered the Pact by accident. I was told the problem by the problem player, You should just play Warlock Paladin, it's just better, in Session Zero. When I refused, I was told, Fine, but you better be able to stand back and just self-spam Eldritch Blast, because that's all you're good for. The first session begins, and aside from some cringe moments, I was having a good time being the other side of the DM screen. We get to a dungeon, and after fighting some monsters, find a chalice, brimming with dark energy. The DM tells me my possessed weapon is commanding my character to drink from the chalice. My character can be compelled by the weapon from time to time, as part of the pact. I say my character moves to drink from the chalice, but I'm interrupted by the problem player saying, I'd like to start blade singing and attack him so he can't drink from the chalice. I should point out he was playing a blade singer wizard who, even at level 3, had some bonker stats. I think he was sitting at AC-21 while blade singing with multiple attacks and booming blade. Needless to say, my casual character, built for story over dice rolls, gets absolutely crushed. Afterwards, there's kind of an awkward pause before the DM ends the session, and we never played again. The silver lining is that I have DM'd many times since, and I'm much more aware of the red flags of a problem player. I also heavily discourage PvP, unless there's a legitimate reason and other avenues of resolution have been explored. The DM should have said, What the F? No you don't, sit down. That's what they should have said, personally. But then again, I'm just a guy who's never played D&D &D before, or at least hasn't played a complete campaign before. I I'm never able to sit still for him. Anyway, on to our next story. DM railroads me, then blames me for the outcome. This was a number of years ago during 3.5, but the message logs just got bought back up by an old friend who was there for the events and made me roll my eyes enough to post it here. I've been playing D&D &D for 20 years now, so at the time, I was a fairly experienced and excited when a college buddy invited me to a game. They needed a caster of some kind, and I asked if I would be comfortable playing as either a druid or a warlock. I went as druid as I was familiar with the class and hopped in. The DM was pretty strict with me having to act anti-society as a druid, even saying I couldn't hold coin for too long or I would lose my powers. This seemed odd to me, especially when he had my character handed over the party's rewards for a mission, then made it clear if I did not dispose of them in lieu of letting them be used or sold, I would lose my powers. So we effectively got no reward as he made me throw it away, standing druids hated money and society more than anything else, including handing it to the rest of the party, would not have made sense and I would have lost my powers. Later, we needed to rescue a compatriot from a gladiatorial arena, and myself and our fighter saw slaves being kept and wanted to free them as well. We chose to sneak in masquerading as servants, but after we got in, all of the slaves became immediately openly hostile and would scream as loud as they could while openly attacking us with deadly force if they saw us. The DM said they could not be reasoned with or snuck past as they were too loyal to their masters. As we progressed through the servant area, these were the main events. We hid inside of potato sacks, 
servants happened to choose those exact two sacks, which were under several others and in the back of the larder, and became suspicious when they were heavy, and began to stab at them with kitchen knives. When we tried to use non-lethal force to knock them out, we were told they were so fragile it killed them anyway. We hid the bodies in the sacks and moved them into the kitchen. We hid behind a counter in the kitchen. A woman entered to clean and felt compelled to clean in our hiding spot behind a counter across the room from where she entered. She grabbed a knife, just in case. We again tried to knock her out, but she inevitably discovered us, and were once again told it was lethal anyway, and that the guards heard the clamor and were coming to get us. We tossed the body in a hole in the wall. We were then told that this was a stove and we had just desecrated a body. This society was weird about burial. We finally made it to the prison chambers. We free the slaves and our friend. A monster emerges from behind what was apparently a fake wall, and we're told it was summoned by the slaves and were either enslaved as punishment for being evil cultists or something, and now had to run. So we escape and we make it down a hill. We're told we're safe from the guard, and the slaves and monster have left. We go to rest, and as I go to purify water to get us some supplies, I am told instead that I'm using poison water, and that I need to change my character's alignment from good to evil, and I am now a dark druid because of my choices to murder and desecrate the bodies of people and free a monster. When I argued this, the DM said he thought I was an experienced player, and maybe I should learn how D&D works. He then got into my Skype DMs and started asking me to come back the next week, and he'd revert the changes for me if I wanted, but I would need to learn to accept the consequences and take his word as law. Because in D&D, it's all about the DM. So I blocked him everywhere as a obvious resolution. I just now got a message about this from the friend who originally invited me, because apparently said DM now uses this story as an example, as why he doesn't like having the ALPHABET MAFIA at his table because they're too sensitive for real D&D, and even name dropped me, which is funny, as I mostly run games with fairly dark tones. I just run actual D&D instead of making up nonsense to mess with player characters. Oh my god, that guy is a nutcase, a bigot, and everything in between. Oh my god. Had a player be ex had a player's parent be extremely disrespectful for no reason. Hi, recently became a dungeon master, and so far it's been great until this session. One of my players had to drop out because of work, and I've been looking for a new person to take their spot. Wasn't having any luck until my sister told me about one of her friends who wanted to join. There was one condition. I had to talk to his parents. I was already skeptical because he's 20 and a full-time student, according to my sister, but I still agreed. This was a mistake. The day of the game comes and I check in with my players. My sister gives me an update and tells me that his dad is ready to talk. He calls me up and it already starts off bad. I say hello and before I even get to finish my sentence he says, Hello, I have a few concerns. I expected some questions but not like this. He goes, You're 24, correct? Yes, sir. Why don't you look 24? And makes a gesture to my head. So a little context about me, I have really bad alopecia. I started losing my hair at 17 and went completely bald by 21. It grows back in patches, but honestly looks horrible sometimes. I am very insecure about it, but I have to live with it. I was stunned, but I try to keep going. I explained to him about my hair. He seems like he doesn't care and just moves on to the next question. Uh, so I explained the game to him and how it's played. He made a kind of a face that seemed like he didn't understand what I was talking about. Why aren't you playing with people your own age? I just think the age gap is a problem. More context, my table consists of my sister's friends. They're all girls and they're all 18. I tell him I run tables for whoever wants to play, but I'd definitely rather have everyone be adults. He tells me he understands that his son is an adult, but he still would like to know what his son gets into. I try to really understand this guy, but I already know this isn't worth it anymore. And his last question was the last straw. Is there any alcohol in your house or drugs? When I say no, he goes, 
Are you lying to me? At this point, I give up on the conversation, because I don't even think it's worth it at this point. The man who already made his mind up and was just humoring his son, who was right beside him the whole time. I tell him, no sir, if you don't think this is something you're okay with, then there are no hard feelings. I get this game sounds silly, but that's okay. It's not for everyone. I've been open to you, but I think we're going in circles. We end the call, and I'm angry. I thought we would have an actual talk about the game, and this butthole attacked me because he's overprotective of his adult son. I try to move on. We play our game and have a great session. Lots of laughs. At the end, my sister shows me what her friend texted her. His dad said no because he doesn't trust me and that there were too many quote-unquote negatives. I was very annoyed because he just made me seem like I was doing something wrong. I love this game and think everyone should experience it. Just wish everyone would stop judging us for playing. That's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed the stories I had for you. If you did, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and hit that notification bell. I will see you all next time. Hasta la pasta.